when you enter into certain dynamic of worship, you just want to sit. You just want to bask in the glory of the moment. I think authentic worship is when you can communicate uninterrupted with God. Whatever that means for you. But it's an uninterrupted connection. The song is lifting and waving. For others, it may be clapping and singing. For others, it might just be sitting still. But whatever that authentic connection to God is, you know it when it occurs. And you don't want it to end. And I've been wrestling with this angst in the body of Christ where there's such a disconnect between what that moment produces and what the Lord is allowing us to see in our culture. And what I understand specifically about the book of Revelation is that before it's a wrap, the Lord chin checks the house. Amen. Before he brings about what he has said is necessary for the end, he calls the house to start to question what part have you played in the disconnect where people are missing me? And what I've surmised, Jimmy, is that we've become so professional in our Christianity. Mm. And that we know what to do, when to do it. Mm. But we've lost that childlike joy of being in a place that you don't want to leave. For those of us that raise kids in the Chuck E. Cheese age, Amen. that's before the digital devices and all that stuff. I'm talking about the real Chuck E. Cheese, Amen. Chuck E. Cheese and Showbiz Amen. used to battle out. Some of y'all don't know. Showbiz. But if you remember, trying to get your kid to leave Chuck E. Cheese. I mean, he wanted to slip them some Benadryl. <laughs> Just jokes. <laughs> you just needed some assistance to move them out of the place yeah. Amen. where it was like heaven yeah. to them. That's what church needs to get back to being known for. Not these drive-through services, not that I, you know, everything don't need to be long and drawn out. I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting something deeper, something more meaningful, something where when you connect in, you don't mind a song being like an old Frankie Beverly song or Earth, Wind, and Fire, 15 minutes long. <laughs> Because <laughs> once you got into the pocket, yeah. you could stay there all night. It's like time would stand still. Amen? May our hearts do as scripture encourages us again and pant after God like the deer pants for the water.
on my soul. God, I feel you in this place. Oh my soul longing after thee. I just love his presence that's in the building. And I, Amen. I know it's what the old folks used to say. This is a foretaste of glory divine. Amen. Don't you worry. When we get there for real, what a day of rejoicing. I'm telling you, that old stuff still works. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Where every day will be like Sunday. And the Sabbath will have no day. Come on. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Ooh, God, I love you and I thank you for your presence in this place. I thank you for your people who have chosen to worship you in spirit and truth. Evident by your palatable presence in this place. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Verses 16 and 17 is where our attention is going to lie. When you have it, won't you stand in reference to the reading of God's word? If you need a second, say, hold on. If you need a Bible, let one of our ministry technicians know. They'll be sure to get one to you. That's 2 Timothy, chapter number 3, verse 16 and 17. Ooh, God, I love you. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you. Finding that. I know it's already been saved, but I'm excited because the mother of the church is in the building. Beautiful as ever. Thank the Lord. I'm excited because our chief intercessor is in the building. And I'm excited because she is going back to work this week, so keep her in Jesus. We should all be together. It is our custom to read our confession, which is on the screens. I may drop out, but you continue on, and then I will read the text in your hearing. Let's read. This is my Bible, the Word of God. Today, the Word of God will transform me. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Now here's the word of God according to 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse 16. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction and training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Can you say amen? amen. Reach across your aisles and grab your neighbor by the hand as we go to the Lord in prayer corporately. And I would have you consider for the next couple of moments a theme, a tag around this text. That's familiar to some. Love language. Love language. Eternal God, our Father, it's in the precious, holy, and master's name of he who is our Christ, that we are excited to be in your presence. Now, Lord God, continue that which you have begun in us, Lord God. Transform us, shape us, mold us, make us into the image that is most conducive for your use, which is your Son, Jesus Christ. Remove anything in us that's not like you, Lord God. Neighbor, I squeeze your hand just as a sign. Just to let you know that this is how close God is to you right now. That whatever it is you stand in the need of, I'm touching and agreeing for your needs to be met by God. Release that which is not productive and that which God did not give you. Uh, because the moment that you release what you do have that he doesn't want you to have, he will then in turn replace that with what it is that you need so that you can fully become who it is he created you to be. Dave, I'm squeezing your hand just to let you know you got back up. Right. Now save somebody, Lord God. Heal somebody. Deliver. Set a captive free in this place. Because only you can do that by your spirit. For it's in the name of Jesus. And we all said, Amen. 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 And have your seat in the presence of our God. <laughs> all scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, correction, training, and righteousness. Love language. Chris, love is a language. Love is a language. Think about that just for a moment, if you would. In the name of love, crimes of passion 
and causes of compassion have torn down societies and have mended together communities. We've stopped in the name of love. <laughs> and we've let love lift us up. Love is more than just a simple emotion. Amen. It's more than just a feeling. And, and what we've done in here in the past is we've taught that love is a choice. Yes, love does promote feelings and it alters emotions, but only if you give it permission. Right. In order for love to do what love does, there has to be a willing participant in the process. At the heart of this four-letter word is an enablement to do something greater than you believed possible before being challenged by it, therefore making love at its core an empowerment. It's with that being said that I will, in a more official capacity, ask the question that I started to articulate in the opening moments of me standing up. What is God up to? I, I know that we find ourselves in different situations asking God, what do you want me to do? We, we, we try to figure out what is happening with us. But, but I'm wondering how many of us have surveyed the terrain of what's happening in the culture and just sat back and asked, God, where, what, how, why come? Do we find ourselves here, and what is it that you're up to? What is your vision for the earth in this season? It's, it's when we wrestle with trying to figure out what God has in mind or planned and how we engage ourselves into his plan instead of getting him to come into our plan. Right. That we find ourselves needing a little communication. Amen. Paul said in Romans chapter number 8 verse 31, when wrestling with the glory of God in a graceless society, what then shall we say to these things? When, when what you know about God does not line up with what you see, then it's only right to ask, what is God attempting to communicate? What does God have to say about what is being seen? It's in the, this framework that we have come to this text in 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Paul is instructing and encouraging us to really keep the main thing the main thing. He's instructing and encouraging us to keep it simple. Stay focused on your faith instead of distracted by so many other things. I feel a small little commercial break. I remember Jesus when he walks into Mary and Martha's house and uh, we find that the moment he comes in, these two sisters um, receive him differently. Mm -hmm. The text says that Mary, upon Jesus' arrival in her presence, instantly sits at his feet, mm -hmm. ready to receive whatever mm -hmm. he wants to communicate. Mm -hmm. But Martha, on the other hand, is busy. She's busy getting things ready and prepared, and, and she's here, and she's there, she's hither, and she's fro. She's just all over the place. And the question becomes, what are you getting ready when he's already here? <laughs> Why are you still running around when you should be sitting down? She gets so frustrated by the fact that whatever she trying to get ready ain't ready. Mm -hmm. She goes to Jesus and says, aren't you going to tell Mary 
to come help me? Lord, I ain't supposed to be preaching this text, but I feel something pushing. <laughs> Aren't you going to get Mary out of worship? <laughs> to come work on something that I want to do? And Jesus says the most amazing thing. Martha, Martha, you're busy about a whole lot of things. And that's kind of where the church is at. Yes. We have a standing appointment with the Lord every week. He has promised to meet us in his house. And we're so busy. The author of everything that is and shall be, who can give you clarity about whatever it is you're dealing with, yes. Right, yes. Right. has set an appointment mm -hmm. and is faithful to keep it. Yes. And yet, <laughs> we're Martha. Yes, Paul is instructing us to keep the main thing the main thing and focus on our faith. Seeing things as the Lord does during seasons of division are critical. When life would come to distract you, to try as it would to persuade you, what gives us the peace of God in times of turmoil is our focus on being on the Lord's side of the equation. We live in a very divided culture right now where everyone is attempting to get you to their side of whatever we're dealing with. And if we are going to survive, if we're going to thrive, then we have to be mindful to not find ourselves pulled to this side or pushed to that side, but we need to make sure that we're on the Lord's side. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Amen. Be quick to listen. But you better be slow to speak. If I could modernize that text, be slow to tweet. <laughs> God communicates his vision through love. There are three expressions of love that God uses to communicate his desire. And then there are six things, six tests that he used in effort to test and to develop his will in our life. If you give me just a couple of moments, I promise you I'll run through this real quick and let you get to brunch. Amen? Amen. He establishes his new covenant with mankind by communicating his compassion towards <coughs> us. Uh, John 3.16, you know it. You can turn to it if you like, but I'm sure you can recite it. It just simply says this. For God so loved the world that he gave his own son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The cause that makes us affect things the way that we do in this culture is sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The cause uh -huh. that makes us affect things the way that we do is sin. Sin has set the stage and adjusted the standard of what our culture does. Contrary to popular opinion, it's really important for us to understand that the context that the Lord has put us into is run by sin. I know, saying that the church people seems very childish. It seems like something that I should probably have as a lesson downstairs with the kids. But you know, it's amazing to me how many adult folk, adult church folk, Christian people yeah. are shocked by how crazy the world is. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. We, we get so befuddled. We get so baffled when we see the world acting as only the world can yes. act. Yes, come on now. Yes. And it is this shock and awe that we seem to keep rehearsing week on. after week, yeah. month after month, mm -hmm. nine months in, and still trying to figure out why we still so shocked. It's because the context yes. Yes. in which we have been inserted 
is structured and run by sin. And when we don't understand that, when we don't accept that reality, then that causes how we engage it to be altered. If, if truth be told, it causes how we engage it to mimic it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And if we're not mimicking it, we're at least reacting to it. But God did not send his son into the world so that you could act like the world. Come on, now. Uh, Come on, Pastor. He, he didn't send the communication of his compassion into the world so that you could receive his love and then act like you're not loved. Amen. Amen. The world acts as if it does not know that it's loved and it's constantly looking for love in all oh, the, wrong the, wrong places. Places. the wrong places. And, and, and I know y'all been saved for a long time, but there's a handful of us that remembers looking for love in oh, <laughs> not just wrong places, mm. strange spaces. <laughs> strange fruit. Just yeah. God exposes his concern for us by sending his only son to engage and redefine the world divided and separated from him. In Matthew chapter number 9, verse 35, it says this, Jesus went through all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every dis-ease, healing every dis-ease, healing every dis-ease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds... The text says he was moved with compassion. He didn't look at him and just say, y'all crazy. He knew they were crazy. It takes no faith and no anointing to react to the world the way that the world is acting. But the reason why, Letitia, the world isn't being changed is because the church is too busy being shot by the world. <laughs> we come in here and we play church. Because we're professionals. And we miss the authentic encounter that refills our tank. So that we can go and encounter the culture mm -hmm. and be countercultural yes. instead of common. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It says that when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them. Why? Because they were <laughs> harassed uh -oh. and helpless mm -hmm. like sheep without a shepherd. Wow. The compassion of the Lord caused him to communicate his commitment to changing the world, even through the cross. Yeah. Here's what I'm trying to say about this first point. In order to communicate the compassion that God has, you must be committed to the cause of God, even if it kills you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, Amen. <laughs> Jesus came. To express, to communicate the love of God even to the point of the cross. God's love language is compassion according to John 3.16. But it's not only that. Are you still with me? Did I lose anybody? No. It's not only that. It's critical. It's not only compassionate. It's critical. Uh, Revelation 3.16. Revelation 3.16. So because you are lukewarm, you are neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. <laughs> God communicates through Jesus that his love language is not only compassionate, it's critical. In the closing book of the Bible, the forecast of our faith, God communicates what makes him nauseous. See, everybody wants a relationship with God when he's saying how wonderful you are. Everybody wants just the warm, fuzzy feeling 
Um, but a real relationship with someone is not someone who's always going to blow smoke up places. I cleaned that up on the way out. I was looking at my mama and I cleaned that up on my way out. It's not just one who speaks highly of you, but it's one who ain't scared of you to be critical of you. When we get to the book of Revelation, we find that God communicates, look, if you won't make it up here, let me tell you what potentially could prevent it. Yes. Yes. Think about that. The communication that John receives is that Jesus considered coming down, but on his way of coming down, to claim us, he got queasy. Just, just as he was ready to redeem and reward, instead of running to us, he had to run to the restroom. He had to run in another direction because we lacked a sustained commitment to his cause by keeping the faith. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Wow. If you were to ask the average Christian if they got faith, yeah, they got faith. Mm -hmm. But the question is, have they kept the faith? Come on. Come on. How many commercial breaks have there been in their faith? Ah. What has the power to distract their faith? When are they faithful? Ah. In church, Everybody got faith. Right. <laughs> but tell me what you like when you're struggling. As a matter of fact, you don't have to tell me. I can watch you. As a matter of fact, I ain't even got to watch you. I just got to notice when you don't show up. I came to meddle a little. <laughs> Somehow those who should know better, those who call themselves Christians and gather in his and by his name had lost sight, talking about the Revelations text, had lost sight of the compassion for the cause of Christ that they should be communicating. And they had chosen to conform to the pattern of the world rather than being transformed by the example set by Christ. Commercial break? It's amazing how many people have a religious spirit mm -hmm. yes. but can't mimic Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 And contrary to popular opinion, wow. they're not synonymous. Wow. <laughs> we have great protocol yes. mm -hmm. but poor personality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, get back to the text. I, I just wanted to throw that out there. What God communicates is that in the end, what he will criticize and condemn are those who say they are with him, but through their actions, they are far from him. Those who never put their faith to work. On one hand, we are exposed to his compassion in John 3.16. On the other hand, we are warned of his critique, Willie, in Revelation 3.16. Mm -hmm. But sandwiched there in the middle between them is 1 John 3.16. Right. And there we find the key we are to communicate so that we reflect his compassion and don't become rebuked through his critique. Mm -hmm. The language of love is dynamic. Sometimes you're up and other times you're down. You have good days and bad days, but they've all been factored into the plan of God, so be very careful staying too far on any of your extremes. Yes. Don't think that just because you're feeling this that that automatically means that God did not call it for you. Don't think that because you're down here having to go through that. Don't think that God does not love you. No, it's all part of the process. The highs are there in order to give you a foretaste of glory divine, but the lows are there in order to keep you focusing on glory to heaven. Good. It's all in the way he communicates his love for you. Oh, gosh. This is an infomercial kind of message. <laughs> Woe be unto all of those people who have to have it good all the time. 
That causes you to keep looking for a new lover. Uh oh. Uh oh. Come on now. Every time you fall out with your current. Okay, Joey Watton. <laughs> here's, here's the third C. Uh, comparison. Comparison. In a season of division where people are looking for reasons to not be together, God communicates through our connections. Seeing things as the Lord does means that you have to do what the Lord did. You cannot see what he sees if you're not willing to do what he did. Amen. Here is the comparison. 1 John 3, 16, as I said it in your hearing. By this we know love. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Everybody talks about it, but this yeah. is how you know what it is. Right. That he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Now, let me just, just say this. We good with Jesus' sacrifice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we come, we shout, we run around on the floor and snot talking about what he did for us. But when it comes time for us to sacrifice for us. And to be clear, when I say us sacrificing for us, I'm not talking about you sacrificing for you. I'm talking about you sacrificing for the person next to you. You can't receive God's love if you're not willing to reflect God's love. Yeah. Come on, come you on. can't see what God sees if you're not willing to do what he did. God did not love us from afar. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. He loved us so much that he came down and got in it. He had no relationship with our crazy tales. <laughs> He was full of light. Light, let me rephrase that. Light came from him. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. And he stepped into darkness. Scripture says, and darkness comprehended it not. Mm -hmm. This was Bible study. I really played with that. <laughs> How bright you gotta be when light, where darkness starts scratching its head. What then do we say to these things? What would happen to it if the church and her people stepped into a world that is already dark and became the kind of light that made them scratch their heads? But we scratching our heads at how dark they are. God has connected us to one another to provide opportunities to be living examples of his love to the earth. God the Father saw the condition that sin had us in and sent to us Jesus who gave himself up so that we would no longer be locked up by the enemy. Amen. And just like when God paraded the animals before Adam to, in the garden to see what he would name them, the Lord now uses our interactions with one another to see and to prove our likeness to him so that he can use us for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I said that kind of fast. I think I might have lost some of you. Mm -hmm. Can I say it again one more time? Mm -hmm. And God, like he did in the garden, paraded the animals to see what he would name them. So whatever Adam named the thing, that is what the thing became. The church is full of Adams. And the way that we interact with one another, God is watching to see if he can use you and I in order to affect them to rename that. But if our interactions are whack, then he's not going to trust us to be used by them. The condition of the world will not change until the communication in here 
is in proper comparison to the love of God. Unless you and I are uh, connected to his compassion in a proper comparison to Christ, then the condition of the culture will not change and we will be subject to his criticism when we see him face to face. Mm -hmm. So how do we make sure that we communicate out there in the culture um, what we communicate out there in the culture compares to what God wants to say? How do we become kingdom Rosetta Stones? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. There are six quick little criteria that I want to just kind of drop into your spirit. No, no. Back to our original text. 2 Timothy 3, 15. 3, 16, I'm sorry. All scriptures God breathed out and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction and training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete in every good work. It's through what we learn by connecting to one another around the word that Jesus is mimicked. The word of God is a living, breathing document. For yes. in the hands of the one who believes in it, it breathes new life into every one of his or her situations. Mm -hmm. There is no eternal struggle that a believer will go through that the word of God does not have an example and an outcome solution for. Mm. Yes. Okay, yes. can I say that one more time? Yes. There's no eternal struggle that you will go through that the word of God does not have an answer for. That does not mean that everything you go through, there's a word for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Every eternal struggle yes. mm -hmm. that you go through, there's a word for. Okay. Now let me just say why there's a nuance on that. Because some of the things you go through, God didn't put in your path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And since he didn't put it in your path, mm -hmm. he ain't got nothing to say about it. You go find whoever put that in your path and get their input on it. Oh, the Lord's not speaking to me. Because you didn't ask him if you should have been in that situation. I told you guys, this was just a troubled message. I'm sorry. Therefore, the church becomes the place, the ultimate space where the people connect to develop into the kind of relationship around common understandings. In other words, how God defines a thing becomes how that thing is defined again. Remember back in the garden, we are Adams again. We are a continuation of what the Lord did. We are created in his image. He wants to be able to do through us what he initially wanted to do through the first Adam, whereas he could define creation through us yeah. instead of allowing creation to define us. Yeah. Right. But the only way that that happens is when we come around the word of God and we agree to what God says a thing is, mm -hmm. then we go out there and communicate that same truth because the truth has a job. The job of truth is to set you free. Amen. But the only way that it can set you free is if you know that it's true. Yes. But how are you going to know that it's true unless you get around the word of God? And you can't just get around the word of God for yourself. You have to get around the word of God with other people that have intended to get around the word of God. And then you reason That's together. Right. Yeah. Why can't... Why, okay. why you can't just jump off with your own personal devotions is because some of your thoughts ain't holy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm sorry. Did I just bust your bubble? You don't always think the right thoughts. Some of the stuff you got was a result of the burrito you ate last night. It wasn't the Holy Spirit. So therefore, you need the relationship with other believers to be able to say, what is that? That's not what that says. That's not what that means. We need to be able to connect and communicate with one another. Pause again. That's why the enemy allows church fights. That's the reason why he stirs up church mess. That's the reason why you can be sitting next to somebody and you ain't spoke to them the whole service. Because what the Lord wants to do is use that connection that's different than the way that you think so that you can create something better than just what you got. But what the enemy likes to do is think that that difference is some kind of competition, that's some kind of contention, so that you never get... I, 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 I ain't talking about nobody in here. I'm talking about your old church. Because there's something that can only happen in his house 
around his word that brings about truth. And if we don't get that here, we can't be used out there. So we operate in grace with one another. So that we can receive truth from above. Yeah. And go out with the truth yeah. and extend grace so that the truth can set them free as we've been free. Yeah. I mean, I had to, that's, that's, that's the cause of Christ. That's the cause of Christ. He wasn't shocked by how chaotic, crazy the culture was. He understood. He was moved with compassion. Therefore, he knew the truth. He also knew they couldn't handle the truth right. unless it was packaged in grace. Right. That shouldn't be a shock to anybody in here. Because the only reason why you're free is because the Lord extended you grace as he told you the truth. He was gracious and for no other reason just to be patient with you. That's right. You know, some of us were so deep in our mess and we didn't get it the first time or the tenth time we now in our 60s and we still trying to get I'm sorry no I'm not You have to reestablish the truth in the culture in order that the culture might be free. So here's, here, here, here are the testing points. The first thing is that it's breathed out. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Breathed out. Breathed out by God. And another way of saying this is that it has to be spirit-led. Right. This is to speak to the transformational process of the believer. Right. The way that we are transformed is not by doctrine, it's by spirit. Doctrine becomes the platform in which the spirit breathes through. But if you can't be spirit-led, if it's not spirit-led to you, then understand this. If the spirit doesn't do it, it can't be done. I can talk intellectually to you all day long. I can manipulate your emotions all day long. But it's the spirit of the Lord that brings about salvation. If, if, if the spirit of the Lord don't get your heart playing, it makes no difference. I can dance a jig up here all day long. It doesn't make a difference. It's spirit Led. You have to have the assurance that we are communicating for God. And the way that we have that assurance is that we operate by the Spirit. Amen. And the way that we do that is we digest the scriptures to consume them so that they become the nourishment of our soul and serve as the fuel that makes us function like Jesus. The goal is to actualize Acts chapter 17, verse 28. In him I live, in him I move, in him I have my very being. Because see, here's what's going to happen. There's coming a day where every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. Jesus is the word of God and the word of God is Jesus. In other words, he's holding everything together because through him everything was made that has been made. And when this truth hits the culture again, then what will happen is at the name of Jesus. Whatever is holding them will have to release them. Amen. Lord, I wish I had just a little bit of help. Oh, there's pockets. Something about the name of Jesus. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. The sick are healed at the name of Jesus. Mountains are moved. Yes. Walls fall oh, and chains at the yes. name of Jesus. And the only reason why Jesus doesn't have an inroads into the culture is because we're not communicating. We're anymore. not communicating. Amen. Amen. We don't know the power mm -hmm. of the name. Mm -hmm. Secondly, <laughs> the word is profitable. When we come together around the word, there is an eternal purpose that God is working 
that shapes us into the likeness of Jesus. Paul said it this way in Romans 8, 28, all things, and we know all things, and we know all know things all work together things. for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. Uh, what am I saying? Things don't always look good, right. nor do they have to feel good Amen. for God to work them for your good. Yeah. See, the way that God works this thing is he makes the word profitable in your life. And you have to see it as a profitable thing. The benefit of walking with Jesus is that there is a glory that is to come that is not worthy to be compared to the present suffering. Yes. Guys, yes. we were in yes. that yesterday. Yes. You don't know. <laughs> no, therefore, we have to be available for the third thing. That's teaching. Mm -hmm. Teaching. Teaching. Not preaching. Amen. Teaching. Amen. Because we like the performance. Of performance. Come on now. Yeah. But 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 are we in a posture where we want the impartation of the knowledge and the skill and the instruction of the word? Mm -hmm. Because if you're not in a posture to receive the knowledge and the skill and the instruction of the word, then you will just treat this as if it's a show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Instead of taking the substance that comes from it in order to repurpose your life. In our context is shaped by sin. We see things backwards. First Corinthians chapter 13, they don't have this one. Paul said this, for now I see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. In other words, when you get closer to God, when you understand his word, he now recalibrates what you see. You see that the world works backwards and it's our job to turn it right side up. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. The other thing about teaching is that the word of God is never given in whole, but in part. In other words, um, our gathering is used to be an ongoing training to develop us over time. We are systematically matured. Heaven help those who would only come on occasions and believe anything that they received was a complete picture of what God envisioned for their life. Mm -hmm. You learn something, and then you do something with what you learn. Right. But not only must we be available for teaching, we have to be open to rebuke. Mm -hmm. Our text here in the ESV says reproof. Um, the King James Version, I believe, says rebuke. I like rebuke. Yeah. <laughs> it just simply means a stern reproof. Right. The word of God arrests us. When, when we learn from um, the world the wrong things, uh, it's important that the word has the power to come in and make the wrong learning right. But not only does the word of God reprove us or rebuke us when we've learned the wrong things in the world, it rebukes us when we've misappropriated the right things that the word told us. Amen. Oh, yeah, let me get all my professional Christians that can quote a scripture out of context. <laughs> Just because you quote it, don't make it right if it don't fit. Johnny taught us that. <laughs> Come on, catch up, catch up, catch up, catch up, catch up. The word of God rebukes because it can uh, be right in a religious setting, but wrong in the image of Christ. You can say the right things, but if you say it at the wrong time or with the wrong spirit, then that's not how Jesus would have operated in it. And where you might have some legal right, the spirit just overruled you. The word of God provides boundaries and borders. It'll lock us up and hem us in, not for punishment, but for protection. You need to understand and appreciate the rebukes of God. Woo. Woo. You need to be able to be in a place where the word comes and it gets on your toes, it checks your chin, it cleans your clock, and it brings you out, not always saying hallelujah, but help me Jesus. And God help me. I, I don't know high holy moments, but the ones I really appreciate are the ones where, ooh. Because if I'm going wrong, I only have time to get it right. Yes, yes, yes. 
anything that I am wrong in, that I enter into eternity wrong with, I can't fix. It can't be fixed. You are that way for eternity. Every now and again, God, through a reproof or a rebuke, will put you in solitary confinement. Because the way you were playing with others was going to undermine your future. There, there's the criteria where the Rosetta Stone is teaching us, it's rebuking us, but it's also correcting us. Are you all right? We're coming down the home stretch. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Coming down the home stretch, correcting. It sets or makes right by removing error or faults. The Word of God never points out a fault without refocusing our faith. Now let's just be very clear, the word of God does not rebuke without changing your focus by rebuilding up your faith. Which is why you need to be able to have the kind of relationship with God that keeps you coming even when you didn't like the last time you came. The Lord would have given you a recalibration on your faith. But you were still so sore. You were so sour. That we had to cleanse your palate so you can taste fully again. So he corrects it. He gives a new vision to show a more excellent way of doing something that leads to pleasing God. Because contrary to popular opinion, this life is not about you. It's not about me. It's about him. And if we're going to get out of this life alive, we have to please him. Training. Here's the next one, training. Training is just simply discipline. The Word of God uses repetition in order to ensure proper functionality. The whole idea behind a copy to, to be a proper reflection is in the elimination of the ability to tell the difference between the original. See, everybody wants to be unique when the goal for the Christian is to be a good copy. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wants to talk about how special they are and work hard on standing out, not realizing, no, I just want to be a good copy of Jesus. I, I, I want to reflect, I want to remove any and all of the impurities that prevent him from being seen in the room. And, and when, when that becomes my desire, then that is what lines up with the will of God because contrary to popular opinion, that's what God is after with our life. Yes. Yes. He's after getting rid of all of the things mm -hmm. that life, mm -hmm. yes. people, mm -hmm. and the church have inserted into our lives right, right. that are preventing us from looking like Jesus. Come on, come on. And God will do whatever he needs to do in order to get that done before you see him. Why? Because he loves you. He loves you too much to leave you in a way that doesn't allow you to come back to him. So there's a discipline. Yes. How well do you copy? Mm -hmm. When you look at your life, how well does it copy Jesus? Mm -hmm. How disciplined are you towards that being the goal? Because when you allow that to be the filter, it brings a great deal of clarity about the hill in your life. Glory. Oh, it brings, when that becomes the filter, Jesus. That I want to be like Jesus, right. and God is making me like him. Right. Oh, so that's why you treat me Come like this. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. How disciplined are you? Mm -hmm. 
Some experts have said that in order to um, become proficient at something, it requires 10,000 hours. Right. 10,000 hours, 10,000 hours. In order to become proficient at something, uh, it requires 10,000 hours. And, and I'll challenge you as I've been challenging leaders um, for a long time. The thing that you are known for, the thing that other people know about you, the thing that other people can count on you concerning, are things you put 10,000 hours in. Just think about your reputation, whatever that might be. It was as a result of a commitment to at least 10,000 hours in that thing. Now, to the degree that you commit that amount of time, or once you hit that, now that becomes the place where God can now use you because that's how you're known. Now, if it's something that he can't use, it might take ten thousand hours <laughs> to get rid of it. Amen. I ain't Amen. No Amen. 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 But when we put ten thousand hours into something, it makes it difficult to be able to tell the difference between the two things. Mm. Inconsistency in the attendance of a process results in poor duplication. Any inconsistency in the criteria results in a poor comparison. A poor comparison results in a lack of compassion. A lack of compassion results in an unchanged culture. And an unchanged culture results in a criticism of the church. If we do not get serious about reflecting the commitment of God to communicate with the culture compassionately, we are going to be critiqued by God. Amen. 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 Because it's only what we do for Christ. That's what he's trying to communicate. Not the division. That's to be expected. He's trying to communicate his love. Even in a divided place and space. He's trying to show that there's no division that he can't cross. There's no breach that can be made that he can't bridge. There's no distance that he's not willing to go. There's no poison that he can't cure. There's no ruler he can't topple. There's no heart he can't change. There's no mind he can't regulate. The question is, do you understand that that's who he is, that's what he desires to do and be, and are you willing to be his mouthpiece? Are you willing to Rosetta Stone it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I'm done. Amen. 18 seconds to go. <laughs> God's love language is dynamic but it's consistent and it's clear. He's got a compassion for the lost and those that are not in his presence. The more cantankerous, the better. That's how you got here. I'm sorry, that was rude. That's how I got here. Can you just do for someone else what someone else <coughs> did for you? Mm -hmm. Can you look past their faults like God did for you mm -hmm. and see what they need? Father, we thank you. Communicating so clearly through your scriptures that your love for us was evident in the Son that you sent for us. And the example of Jesus to be able to share your compassion, your desire to bring us to you, took him to the cross. And he died that we might live. Now, Lord God, let us be willing sacrifices and offer up our bodies 
offer up our living so that someone who is dying might live. Yes. Teach us how to connect and communicate with each other and here. Prove us here. Prove the church again. Make us into Jesus and then send us as his duplicate, as his representation, as a proper comparison into a culture that needs to see him, mm -hmm. that needs to hear him. Because if they see and hear him, they'll be able to communicate with clarity with you. Thank you, God, in advance for the fruit that will come from the seeds that have been sown. May you get all of the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Can you put some on it?